This is the simplest concept anybody can implement into their conventional homes or off-grid homes. So we're incorporating this passive cooling system into our structure it is not only highly efficient, but ultra low cost and very simple to design and implement. What's going on everyone? I'm Brandon and this is the Greening the Desert Project. So what is a cooling tube? A cooling tube, earth tube, passive cooling, passive heating, all these different labels that this system has. For what we're doing, we're gonna be labeling it a cooling tube. With a cooling tube, we're utilizing the stable ground temperature, funneling the hot air through it, and having a passive cooling effect. Essentially, cool the air coming into the room by 10 to up to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. They're usually buried down in between four to six feet because we want to utilize the constant ground temperature, which can range in between 45 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit, depending on your location, but depending on the depth of the cooling tube itself. Now the length of the tube can vary depending on our needs, but also our location. So it kind of depends on your situation, your goals, what you're trying to accomplish, the temperature you're trying to reach. All those variables can contribute to the depth and the length of your tubing. But generally most cooling tubes extend out to almost 50 feet, give or take a few feet, but can also extend out to thousands of feet, depending on the outcome that you want to achieve. And this setup requires zero electricity to run. We actually could hook up a fan to it to facilitate more airflow. But for just the concept in general, it's a passive cooling system because that hot air is being drawn in. There's a convection process going on because inside of the structure, we will have ventilation at a high point to funnel out the hot air, which will facilitate fresh air from outside coming in through the tubes and being cooled by the stable earth temperature and essentially coming in as air conditioning. Now the advantage of this system is that it's very ultra low cost, meaning that we don't have to input or buy a whole lot of materials for this system. But also the fact that it's a passive system means that we don't need to use any electricity to make this system function, which makes us a lifelong system. So as long as the life of the building is here, the life of the cooling tubes is here. And what we're using are furnace ducting. These are eight inch diameter ducting pipes that we're using and they come in, you know, four, five, eight foot lengths and such like that. It's kind of however long you're going to make yours is dependent on the size that you get. So going through the basket is the only point where we're utilizing the duct ventilation pipes here. Otherwise, the rest of the materials, just like the Gabion baskets, we're gonna be using stone to create our own tubes, which that's further mass that hopefully should absorb more heat, slow the air slightly coming through the tube and cooling down that air so that we could potentially get a greater temperature difference to 20, 25 degrees lower temperature than outside. And that's where the heating concept actually comes in because essentially with the hot air heating the stone and the tubing during the day and producing cooler air inside, that means at nighttime we potentially could have these open and because of the energy that's been absorbed by the tube, we essentially could be funneling in warmer air to keep the air temperature inside of the room more temperate throughout the night and less fluctuations between hot and cold. I wanna give a special thanks to our Green Guardian members on YouTube and Patreon. We really appreciate your guys' ongoing support in this Greening the Desert project. You can support the Greening the Desert project here by joining our Green Guardians Patreon or YouTube membership but we also offer permaculture consulting, specializing in regenerative agriculture, regenerative livestock management, soil health, and a whole lot more. We're actually gonna take a little spin on this concept and we're gonna take it just a little step further. We're gonna combine the cooling tube effect, also going to add evaporative cooling. So if anyone knows a little bit what swamp coolers are, water-cooled air conditioning systems, essentially just utilizing the water to help 
cool down the air that's passing through it. But we'll be bringing these tubes, extending these out another 20 feet or so for all three of the cooling tubes that we have. And we'll be extending these that have a slight contour to them. So they're slightly on level, but they have a slight downward tilt to them so as to facilitate when we do get the monsoon rains or extreme rain events that we'll be funneling the water away from the structure itself. But at the same time, we'll be capturing a little bit of the water on these cooling tubes because they will somewhat function as swales or these berms on contour that will help facilitate water soaking into the ground and into the area of the cooling tubes themselves so that the air that will end up passing through will have the cooling effect from the lower ground temperature because of the moisture that's been penetrated. So not only is this system for cooling, but it also somewhat acts as a dehumidifier because of the hotter air that has a bit of moisture in it and because of the cooling tube and all of the cooler stones and the cooler air temperature will have condensation that builds up on the rocks. So therefore we're dehumidifying the air as it comes into the structure. And that's why we'll be creating these rock tubes essentially so that any condensation that does build up in the tube will fall to the ground and be absorbed by the dirt and contribute more to the tube staying cooler because that ground is staying more moist, which equates to holding on to the temperature underneath that much longer. And that's where a while back we actually had dug our first infiltration basin back here. We have other plans to do more basins, but that's where we'll extend our evaporative cooling tubes down towards our basins so that they're facilitating water being diverted towards the basins. We'll be able to utilize that water. We'll eventually line it and hook up a pump and we'll have an inlet tube that will be spraying the water over the intake tube and furthering the cool down effect as it travels through the rest of the tube into the house. As we slowly build up the outside piping and build up the berm on the back side of the structure, on the inside here, we'll end up mudding and creating a airflow doorway, you could say, that we can open and close when we need the cooler air to come in and be able to close it off, especially during the winter time. Now it might seem a bit redundant that we have multiple concepts that are doing the same thing as far as heating and cooling. But in my opinion, having this redundancy is going to contribute to not needing air conditioning units or multiple heating units besides our rocket mass heater. But this eliminates a lot of costs as well as electricity that's needed for these systems and just creates a more efficient, effective, sustainable option for those heating and cooling needs. Doing these concepts, that's a part of our goals and what we're striving for is to create a structure as sustainable, regenerative, and renewable as possible. And coinciding with permaculture principles, we're trying to create this self-sustaining, self-sufficient structure. I've got a few other concepts to go over, but first we actually need to fix. Mm -hmm.